Hey guys, what's up? Uh, it's Gara or uh, or Natsu, depending on uh, which show you listen to. And uh, uh, I guess I'm just gonna update you guys on a couple of things since I haven't talked in a while. Uh, first off, Anime Expo was amazing, and I'm gonna be talking about that a little more in depth in a little bit later. Uh, just wanted to update you on some podcasting stuff first. I am still working on. Uh, episode 142 for Konoha Corner. I'm working on. Just got back to working on the rest of uh, Fairy Tale. Uh, the reason why it takes so long to get the Fairy Tale episodes up, and I know you guys are pissed at me because it's like so far behind. It takes a long time to get everybody together to do the new manga read-throughs that we're doing on Fairy Tale. So I thought I'd give you the the listeners or watchers out there, as it were the uh, the option to kind of weigh in on that. Do you think we should release the episodes without the actual manga read-throughs and post the manga read-throughs up separately so that the episodes aren't so far behind? Uh, let us know in the comments down below. Give us your thoughts. Um, uh, we're still getting trolled on episode 6 of the Fairy Tale podcast on YouTube. Uh, I, I, honestly, at this point, I think it's, like, one guy that's, like, constantly changing his name and, like, saying all sorts of horrible stuff. But the thing is, is, like, I've seen where people are coming from getting this episode, and it's, like, they're watching episode five of Funimation. No, not even the Funimation stuff, because the Funimation stuff would move the motor. They're watching episode five of Fairy Tale on YouTube, illegally. And they're coming to this channel immediately afterward because it's Fairy Tale Podcast Episode 6, and the tags keep putting us on the side for, uh, <laughs> for that. So that's how they're getting led here, and that's why they're getting all pissed off. But you know what? Uh, f*** you, because you're watching it illegally. You are not contributing to Hiromashima's work in any way, shape, or form, uh, and you're getting all pissed and yelling at me because of it, so not my problem. Uh, I'll probably, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll probably beat myself out saying F you, but, I mean, that's just how it is. This is ridiculous. You guys gotta calm down and stop trying to spread, like, massive hatred because you were watching something illegally and then you came to our channel by mistake, and then you're like, Oh, this is Blizzard, man. You guys are horrible subbers. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, we're not subbing. We're a freaking podcast. I never, we never tried to pretend that we were anything else. And we no longer break the episodes down into three pieces. We are uh, a, capable of uploading a full episode every time. Uh, so uh, what, do you, what do you think about these guys? Are they just straight trolls? Should they be pissed? Let us know in the comments down below. We want to hear what you think, and we will reply to it on the newest episode that we record, which, honestly, I think is like 46 or 47. It's somewhere up there. Like, we're way, way behind. I know episode 42 is what's supposed to be up, and it's not. And I apologize for that. That That's a crew issue, and just trying to get everybody on to get all their lines recorded, and then it takes a while to get all the sound effect files and the music and everything in, so again guys, I apologize, but just keep an eye out on the Fairy Tale Podcast iTunes account and the YouTube account, because usually our stuff will go up on iTunes a couple hours before it'll go up on YouTube, sometimes even a day, it depends on how busy I am that day, it really, really does, and with Lisana on vacation with her family, um, I don't know how this MP3, MP4 thing is going to work, because normally I can put them as WAV files and send them over to her, and she puts it all together that way. All right. Uh, for the stuff to catch up on. Okay. Uh, I recently, uh, I'm not trying to, like, really toot my own horn on this one, but I recently became a professional voiceover actor. So for those of you that were like, dude, you should like do voiceover. I I did. I succeeded in getting into that arena. Um, nothing like, uh, nothing amazing. I haven't done any video games yet. And I'm not being called down or up or over anywhere to do voiceover for anime. That's, I'm not like insanely popular. I'm not a high commodity. I know where I am. And 
I, I'm just glad to be part of that community. And so far, the community has been really awesome and welcoming. And uh, I've gotten my hand on some side projects, directing and doing voiceover and writing. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. So at the same time that I'm doing stuff for Konoha Corner and Fairy Tale, I'm also doing all of that stuff on the side. And so it's taking a lot of my time, and I apologize for how far behind everything's getting. I really, really do. Um, I'm looking for somebody that can edit for Konoha Corner so that I can, like, focus on just fairy tale. Uh, but I need somebody that really, really knows how to edit and can uh, talk to me over Skype. So if you are interested in editing for Konoha Corner, uh, send us an email, podcast at gmail.com. And, uh, yeah, we, we need we need people uh, with Macs, de- definitely. Uh, if you know how to use Audacity, that's great. But at the end of the day, all of our stuff goes through generally. Uh, I, I don't know if, it, yeah, it's pretty much going to be that way with Konoha Corner still because we need to put it in GarageBand so we can convert it over to M4A files so that people can skip through a segment that they do or do not want to hear. Um, so that's that's a thing. Okay. Um, uh, as for anybody that like has any questions on voiceover, uh, I mean, voiceover in and of itself, whether you're talking about anime dubbing or just straight out voiceover, uh, there's, uh, that's like two, three, maybe four hour long panel just to talk about that, but I'll give you the cliff notes. Get used to rejection. Okay, I I turn in probably 30 auditions a week and hear back from maybe three of them. And the three that I hear back from, I'm not, I'm still not even guaranteed to get the part. It's just they're interested and, you know, they may cast me or they may not. And, I mean, you'll have to get used to that. There's not a lot of uh, so the, the, there's not like uh, a lot of money, so if you're expecting to like come home with a fat paycheck, not gonna happen uh, unless you manage to grab some roles like all over the place that are like expensive. Like if you can get that $500 job three times in a week, yeah, then you'll probably be rolling in. But that I don't see that happening a lot. Um, what's another thing? Uh, acting definitely need to know how to act. Okay, guys, uh, what you can and cannot do with your voice, like, generally, everybody's like, oh, you have so many voices you can do. No, I just have, like, three, maybe four, and then I merge them all together to make new voices, and that's kind of how that happens. Uh, That's how the Joker thing happened. I I merged two voices that I could do together, and it ended up becoming the Joker, and it was kind of cool. But for all of you out there that say I do a really good Joker, have commented on my Joker voice or said something, uh... Thank you, uh, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but, but I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I can't talk about any of the projects that I auditioned for because uh, whether it's there in writing or not, I always act like it's a non-disclosure agreement, so I just don't talk about it. But most of what I've been doing is like commercial radio kind of advertise base. And so if you don't notice my voice, I've actually done a good job. But being able to convey emotion properly is more necessary for voiceover than uh, for, I would say, traditional acting because uh, you're not able to see anybody's facial expression. So it's very, it's very, very different. Alrighty. Uh, Acting, get used to rejection, get used to being broke. Yep, those are pretty much the cliff notes. Alright, so yeah, um, I'm not trying to tooting my own horn. I've just been really, really excited because this is like a dream come true kind of job for me. So if anybody feels like I've been rubbing it in their face and like trying to be like, oh, I'm a, I'm a voice actor now. Oh, I'm such a heavy reading player. And that is not my intention. I am not trying to say that. Uh, and if it came across that way in this video or to anybody that I've been talking to since I got that job, I apologize. I'm just incredibly stoked and I don't know how to contain my excitement because yeah I don't I don't bottle very well anymore um but but it's still a lot of fun I have a lot of fun doing the auditions several amazing audition pieces out there that I 
I looked at and I was like, oh, I totally want to do that. And I'm like crossing my fingers hoping I get those roles. And those are usually the ones I don't get. So, yeah. The ones I'm dying to do, I don't get. So, uh, again, just get used to rejection. It's kind of the thing. Uh, what else? Oh, Anime Expo. Uh, wanted to talk, okay, I didn't talk about OMG, which was freaking amazing. Uh, a really, really good con. And I, I agree with Greg Air's statement. It's very much relaxed a con. It's pretty, it's very chill. Uh, there were a lot of really good panels there. I got to, uh, assist Wendy in the fairy tale panel, and that was really fun. Uh, but, uh, I got grabbed up for the Sailor Moon panel. That was really, really fun. Uh, and I made some really good friends there and bought a lot of stuff that I probably shouldn't have bought from the dealer's room. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's how, that's the sign of a real fan. You know, even when you're broke, you'll still pay for what you like. Uh, case in point, I'm a smoker, so, yeah, there's that. Um, but all around really awesome people that were there. Just, uh, a really good time. And, uh... I want to thank everybody for uh, helping me get there. Everybody that was involved in helping me get there and get back home, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I, I cannot say this enough. I could not have done it without you. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Anime Expo. Okay. Uh, Anime Expo was awesome. I got, like, several, several things. So uh, I'm going to show stuff off. This is This is one of the few times I get to brag. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm going to do some media stuff and promoting, too. So, uh, Neon Alley. Sponsor! No, uh, n n not a sponsor. No, uh, but Neon Alley is a, uh, is a new channel. For those of you that can't see. Neon Alley is a new channel, uh, coming out soon, uh, for Viz. And they're going to be putting out a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, I say Viz, I'm not actually sure if it's 100% completely Viz. But it's an all-anime channel that you can watch, I believe, online and on your 360 PS3. Uh, so, really cool stuff. You can watch anime anytime, anywhere. I uh, don't know how that's going to hurt Netflix. Not sure if that is, because there's only so many titles on, that Netflix will carry. And uh, I, I do know that uh, Tiger and Bunny is going to be one of the series that they're going to put out there. And uh, I, I've recently gotten in Tiger and Bunny, and I, I like it. I really, really like it. But, uh, um, uh, big thanks to Funimation and Viz for, like, getting my back at Anime Expo, uh, and, uh, the staff at Anime Expo, thank you guys so, so much, because I get in as industry press, so thank you guys so, so much. Uh, another cool thing about, uh, Shonen Jump and Shonen Jump Alpha, they were giving away, if you were there, you probably saw this, there were people running around with, uh, with like um, these little things that you'd get stamped, like these little pages that you'd get stamped, and uh, <coughs> if you get all three stamps, you get this Shonen Jump bag, and that's not it. You get the other side there, and uh, Shonen Jump Alpha, the, the guy, the, oh, the Jump Alpha team, you guys were so awesome. I, I was glad to go to your meet and greet. There's a lot more stuff that I need to cover. Um, giving away, uh, oh yeah, they had, uh, Blue Exorcist lanyards they were giving away as well, and they've got these, uh, Viz Media lan lanyards that came in if you went to the Shonen Jump panel, and this is the reason I liked it so much, is because it's got Naruto on there, I'm like, yeah, Naruto, Naruto and Bakuman, not so much about the Bleach, but I love Naruto and Bakuman. Okay, so, before I get horribly sidetracked, another awesome panel that I got to go to was Danny Chu's panel. And that guy was, like, inspiring, amazing. Like, the amount of inspiration that he was spouting was beyond amazing. And even though it was, like, the very, very last of my money, damn you and your sales pitch, Mr. Chu, but um, I ended up getting these uh, Moikana. And these are cards, not trading cards, but uh, they're like uh, hiragana learning cards. And they come like this. They have the uh, they have hiragana on there. Like the uh, the first hiragana is mo, and it says mo right there, and that's the hiragana for mo. See, it says mo right there, and then it says mochi, which means rice cake, rice cake. And then it actually says mo and chi right there. So it's teaching you hiragana. Now, uh, I'd taken two semesters of 
uh, Japanese in college. So some of these I kind of knew, but there are still a lot of them that I didn't know, like uh, Hinomaru. Hinomaru. I did not know that was how you said the Japanese flag, and it's in there. So even for people who kind of dabbled in Japanese language courses, this is really good because there's still more words out there that I just don't know, and uh, there's going to be more sets, I believe, uh, coming out so that you can learn more, and he's also looking at doing a uh, uh, moe kanji to teach you kanji, which is what I really, really need help with. So uh, if you want to check that out, look up uh, dannychu.com or just type Danny Chu in Google. Google works, people. And or uh, Culture Japan, I really encourage you to check out culturejapan.tv. Really, really good stuff. All right, moving on. I have some more awesome stuff. Uh, Steve Blum. Steve Blum. Got to see him again. He was really, really cool. And he signed my my little grunt postcard. And uh, I got to talk with him for a little bit. And uh, talk to him about several things. Uh, one of the things I did talk about that I can speak with you about right now is uh, trying to get him back on Konoha Corner because we've been scrat we've been chomping at the bit to get him back on Konoha Corner ever since Korra and then Tsunami and then uh, now that he's a Guinness World Record holder. It's just awesome. We want to get him back on there. Uh, other postcards and things that I got. Uh, even though I'm a ninja, I still love pirates, so One Piece, yeah. Uh, which reminds me, uh, really, really awesome was the uh, was watching all the people playing the One Piece game that they had for the 360 and the new one that came out. Just because I like I liked uh, seeing how the characters were after the two year time skip and seeing how powerful they were in the game and everything and seeing how that was incorporated. Really like that. And then they had Dragon Ball Z Connect, which is really fun. I got a chance to play that. It was awesome. And then uh, finally, to wrap that all up, over on the other side for the 360, everybody was playing. <laughs> there was actually quite a line. I was I was rather impressed. Uh, uh, Ninja Storm Generations. There was a big line for that. And uh, if you guys have been to our panel in Momocon, you know we uh, brought out Ninja Storm Generations on my 360, and we let the audience play. And uh, I'd like to hear your feedback on that as well. So if if you genuinely like that, let us know so we can tell conventions that we want to we want to do that at cons that we're going to. Uh, con updates for us, I'm probably going to start doing soon. So uh, keep an eye on the page again for that. All right, uh, next postcard set that Viz had that I could grab up was the Blue Exorcist because I'm actually a fan of that show, and uh, that is another reason why I am. Very, very happy that Sasori or Amaimon, depending on what you want to call her, uh, does the Blue Exorcist podcast or the Blue Extra cast. Also, uh, Aniplex was there, and they they were all about Fate Zero, and I love that because Fate Zero is really, really awesome. We're going to talk about that on Konoha Corner because we're about to start up a new thing on Konoha Corner for uh, reviewing an anime series every month. And uh, this month we're going to do Fate Stay Night and Fate Zero. And if you haven't checked out Fate Stay if you haven't checked out anything in the Fate Stay series, i got to tell you, seriously, um, Fate Zero happens first, and then Fate Stay Night happens next, but Fate Stay Night was released years before Fate Zero, and the animation and the action and the story for Fate Zero is so much better, but you need to watch Fate Stay Night first, otherwise everything that happens in Fate Zero is going to completely ruin Fate Stay Night for you. Uh, I, I highly encourage you to watch Fate Stay Night first so that you can get the awesomeness that is Fate Stay Night and get the superb awesomeness immediately after of Fate Zero. I know that Psy was watching, Psy or Grey, depending on which show you listen to, was checking out the first three episodes of Fate Stay Night. He hadn't even gotten to Zero yet. Uh, but uh, he checked out the first three episodes of Fate Stay Night, and he was like, okay, dude, I'm hooked. And I'm like, I know, it's so good. So uh, generally when I ask you to, if I, make a, uh, if I make a request for my crew to watch something, it's because I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, I know we're going to do Tiger and Bunny next month, but uh, after that it's kind of up in the air. So what we're going to do is we're going to start doing uh, a monthly uh, series where we're going to, be like after after we do one we're going to be like well what would you like us to cover next what anime do you think we should cover next and the prerequisites are that it must be 50 episodes or less 
It cannot be an ongoing series. It has to be something we watch from start to finish, and then we have to be able to do it in a month. Like, we have to watch all these episodes in a month. So it has to be 50 episodes or less. And then we'll give our opinions on it over the show. And we'll do this as a monthly thing. Uh, we really we really want to branch out a little more with Konoha Corner than just straight Naruto talk. Even though we love Naruto, and Naruto is the reason we all came together, it's just, yeah, that's kind of it. Okay, the uh, next one was, I grabbed a crap ton of these from the Funimation booth, all the uh, Natsu ones, and they were awesome. And we're going to be giving these out and signing some stuff to be given out at uh, Anime Southeast, which is actually in just a few more days. Oh, alrighty. Next thing I want to talk about really quickly is, again, from Shonen Jump Alpha. I uh, got some awesome stuff from them. Okay, first and foremost, I want to talk about the posters. All right, for those of you that don't know, they were giving out these posters. And uh, if you're not on Shonen Jump Alpha, you damn well should be because they're, they've got the monthly series out for Roni Kenshin Restoration. And uh, I know we talked about it on some of the more recent episodes of, of Konoha Corner, but we haven't released them yet, and this will be going up before those episodes. So in case you haven't heard, Roni Kenshin is getting a live-action movie that's coming out in theaters in Japan relatively soon. Also, a new anime series, a short anime series that's going to be coming out, and a manga as well. Well, I don't know how short the anime series is going to be, so I'm going to retract that because that'll probably be incorrect. If, if I said it, it's probably incorrect. But um, if you don't like Roroni Kenshin, you can always switch sides. And, oh, look on the back. Yeah, yeah. And that is actually Kishimoto's coloring from the... Uh, from the manga there, and I've got a crap ton of them, and we're going to be giving these out at Anime Southeast and possibly signing them as well. So that's another reason to go to Anime Southeast and hang out and enjoy it, and uh, come to our panel. We're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff. All right, I'm going to move on to the last bit, which is some gifts that I got, and I wanted to thank people via the internets and the webs and the tube, and so uh, <laughs> I guess in commemoration of my Joker voice or something. Uh, Sasori got me a little Pop Heroes Joker, which is so fucking awesome. It is adorable, right? Like, it is the coolest thing. I'm going to open it up right now and show you guys. So, I feel kind of like a kid on Christmas. Awesome. Alright, so, so there we go. There he is. His head doesn't really turn. I, I don't know if his head turns, but I don't really want to because I don't want to pop like his head off or anything. I don't want to damage it. But I love, I love that. That's awesome. Hello, Gotham. Joker's back in town. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, putting it back in is the hardest part. I, I put this thing back in like several times, and. Uh, Trust me, not easy to get gifts like this size and get them back on a plane back home. So, yeah. I need to go to L.A. again, though, because I didn't get a chance to go to the beach or go to Little Tokyo and have some real ramen. I feel kind of bad about that. And the fact that I went into the dealer hall really, really early and became insanely broke. So, yeah, there's that. Oh, uh, another thing about Danny Chu, real quick. Uh, here's the Culture Japan card that he has. And, um... Uh, I, I gotta cover, I think I gotta cover some of this up because that's like contact information, but uh, that's Mirai, Mirai-chan. Now, Mirai means future, uh, but that is the character's name. Her name is Mirai. There you go. And uh, she's been in a couple anime. She's actually like the spokesperson for Culture Japan. And uh, I found it really, really interesting that they use a snowball mic for the voiceover for her character, and I was like, oh, you need to get a Yeti, and then a small I can find room, and yeah, record in a closet with a Yeti microphone. It's totally how you do it. It's how I do it. Uh, and <laughs> fun stuff. My video cut off, so I wasn't able to continue. Uh, actually, I kept rambling and uh, thought that everything was done and over, but apparently my video cut off. Apologize. Uh, so this is what Doctor gave me. And this is <laughs> Sada Haru, 
from Gintama, and it is adorable, fluffy, cuddly, like, oh my god. And uh, for those of you that don't know, Gintama is an awesome, awesome shonen series that's insanely funny. It's basically like Roroni Kenshin with aliens, but with a lot of dick and fart jokes. Insanely funny. Um, I recommend you check it out. It's amazing. And Doctor does a podcast all about it, so you should check that out. Just the Gintama podcast. So, uh, okay, on to stuff that I bought that I probably shouldn't have spent money on because, like, I didn't have a lot of money to begin with, but to hell with it, I'm a fan of, like, all of that. Alright, so if you saw the fairy tale photo shoots, you probably saw a couple of these in there. One of them was mine, and, uh, this is a happy backpack, and it is a official version. Funimation version. See, it's got it's got the Funimation tag on there, and it's got the. And this was not easy to get back onto the plane either. But this little baby cost me about thirty-five dollars, which is only ten more than the plushie that we have for Todd Habercorn, which is actually sitting right up here. This is Todd's plushie, and he'll get this in a couple of days. All right. And uh, that's one of the things I bought. Uh, the other thing that was really cool is this bag. There's this giant freaking bag. Uh, if you buy shirts at this place, they give you this big giant bag. I'm not kidding about the giant size. I'm unfolding it now. And on one side of it is a steampunk, sorry, steampunk Hello Kitty. And as you can see, this is very, very tall. I could, I fit every, practically everything that I had at the con in here and just walked around the con with it. It was awesome. But uh, let's, I'm a brony, so the main reason I got this was because uh, I just wanted the bag, honestly, when I saw it. I just wanted to get the bag. But there's a uh, Rainbow Dash, Steampunk Rainbow Dash on there. It's really, really cool. So I'm going to get that signed whenever I meet the voice actor of Rainbow Dash. I will go to a brony con eventually. Damn it. It will happen. Uh, but like I said, I had to buy two shirts to get that, and the two shirts I bought, uh, again, I'm a brony, so I bought a Dr. Hoobs shirt, so it's the, uh, 10th Dr. Dr. Hoobs coming out of the TARDIS, and he's got the sonic screwdriver in his mouth, and, uh, on either side of him, it's adorable, are two little, uh, weeping angel ponies. So freaking cute, so freaking cute. I think I have it right here, hold on. Yes. Yes, I do. And so, that is it. Uh, Dr. Hooves. And it is flipping awesome. And, uh, let's see. Uh, there's another one. It's around here somewhere. I'm, I, I'm not searching for it. I knew where that one was, pretty much. Uh, but I, I got another one that uh, has a bunch of squares with different ponies in it. it says there's a pony for that kind of like there's an app for that so it's really cool um but major major thank you to kakazu for helping make anime expo so awesome and so amazing and uh just oh i i, I don't think anime expo would have been nearly as great if it hadn't been for his influence and i'm not the only person that would think that either there's quite a few people that went to anime expo that uh, it probably would have turned out badly if he had not gone. So, uh, major, major thank you to Kakazu, and show Kakazu your love, Facebook, emails, YouTube, Twitter, however you do the thing you do to stay in touch with us. Uh, make sure you show some love to the man with the money bank, because Kakazu keeps most of this going. Uh, but, uh, again, we can't rely solely on Kakazoo. Uh, we've got Anime Southeast coming up in a few days, and I'm still kind of broke. I'm hoping I can afford it. <laughs> if, if I have to, dude, I will sleep outside the freaking convention and wait till it opens and then just walk in and be like, yeah, I may crap, I, I may even like knock on some friends' doors and be like, can I take a shower? And then 
go do that and then run back to the convention. I will do that if I have to. I'd really rather find a room. Uh, I don't know what the situation is going to be with everybody, so I know there are a lot of people going. I just don't know what the room situation is. And I'm trying not to be broke when I go there. Also a very big plus. Uh, but, I mean, again, I can't rely heavily on Kakazu. We, got it. we really need your support with uh, getting to all these places that you want us to go to. We get requests to go to conventions all the time. I just got requested to go to a, a convention uh, in Utah and in March next year, and they want me to fly there and set me up in a hotel room. Like, they, they want to pay for my travel and my hotel and have me there as a guest, and I'm like, awesome. See, those I can go to, but, I mean, uh, a lot of the first-year cons and the smaller cons that people are asking me to go to, I would love to go, but most of these conventions, they just can't afford to cover me, even for just one room and maybe uh, getting Kakazu to pay for the flight. Um, I'm not that well known, so there, it's it's kind of not in a sound investment on their part, I guess, because I'm not that very well known. But uh, we're working on it. Uh, I'd like to do at least five panels there, and then document it all. Let people come up and record stuff, talk about their experience at the con, how awesome it was, what friends they got to see, what were some of their favorite cosplays that they either wore or saw other people wearing, you know, and just sharing the general experience of a con via podcast and video and YouTube. And there, there's just, this is how we interact today. The internet is how we do things. And uh, it's just me sharing your experience. That's what we want to do at conventions. That's our ultimate goal: is to eventually just come up to come to a convention and just interview you, you the attendee, you the cosplayer, you the person. We want to hear about your experience and share it with everyone else and make them want to come to the same thing too, or make them jealous that they weren't able to be there or something. You know, just kind of letting everybody live that moment together collectively. That is what the podcasts are really about. Whether it's Naruto, whether it's conventions, whether it's fairy tale, that's what we're trying to do. But again, none of this is cheap, and it's mostly been coming out of mine or Kakazu's wallet for uh, con stuff and keeping the feed going and donating to Sai. I, I've I've donated to Sai to help him get his uh, passport and get over here and be able to stay here for a while so that all you people can meet him. And we know we have a, a large fan base, uh, rather impressively large fan base now, after two and a half, almost, yeah, two and a half years with Konoha Corner and a year with Fairy Tale. So it's just, uh, we are eternally thankful and could not be any more grateful. And we do realize that we do have listeners out there that don't have credit cards or don't have access to it. Um, but, for, I mean, for those that do, seriously, every dollar helps. If we could get like a couple hundred people, and that's simple, we'll just get a couple hundred people to donate a dollar, we could probably take care of this like really easy, just a dollar a month. And we'd be like, $12 a year, yo, $12 a year. That'd be awesome if we could do that. I know that's probably cutting it for a lot of people, and I know how how broke college and high school and just general anime lovers tend to be. But, I mean, it's just the the podcasts, I'm no longer uh, making quite the amount of money that I was making before. And uh, I'm glad that the amount that I'm going to have to pay for the two feeds is going to go down because we're no longer hosting the third feed, the old Kona Corner feed. And I'd, I'm, I'm going to be able to actually drop the amount that I have to pay to keep the Konoha Corner's new feed up by next month. It'll cost me a lot less to do that because I can downgrade because uh, I won't have to upload nearly as many episodes. But, uh, yeah, I mean, in the long run, these things require some cash and uh, we have like three donators and uh, they're sporadic at that because I understand they have lives, they have bills. I understand that stuff, but uh, there, there are literally hundreds of thousands of you out there, so a dollar, please. 
that's that's how I beg. That's how I beg for stuff. A dollar, please. Please. I mean, we get threatened not to shut down, but whatever. You know, it's cool. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much how things are going. Uh, not sure about uh, Oticon, mostly because I I've already submitted for press and I got re I got rejected for press. I did talk to some of the guys at Anime Expo for Funimation about Funimation talking to Oricon and see if they could help me get in. Um, just keep your fingers crossed on that one, I guess, because we'd really like to go to Oticon and meet a lot of you guys and then sit down and do a video interview with the voices of Natsu and Lucy from Japan. And then I could put subtitles on there, or we can just let the translator speak, whichever they're more comfortable with, honestly. And then that will be that, and we have fun with that. So uh, for all of you out there that are checking us out, thank you so much. We appreciate it. This is Natsu Dragon Eel and Gothikara from Konoha Corner and Fairy Tale saying peace off and have a wonderful day.